Okay, so I want to thank everybody um, for showing up for this uh, innovative session uh, that we're doing virtually and physically here. Uh, we've got a lot of people from the Sunlight Foundation here at our Washington office, and we're going to have a number of guests. We have folks uh, in Boston from the Sunlight Foundation, in Western Massachusetts from the Free Press, uh, which has been a stalwart partner in this. And then in New York, we're uh, joined by Amanda Zamora from ProPublica, which has also been uh, one of our partners in this effort. ProPublica has been uh, working, uh, we're kind of working in parallel and now jointly to try to free these files. Um, I will say that I've been a political reporter for um, 30 years. And I think this is one of the most important projects uh, that I've ever been involved in. Uh, my colleague Josh Hatch here um, was the first person who pushed it. I think it's, uh, it's a daunting project and that's why we're asking for so much help because we're really uh, trying to do a lot. But I think it's very, very important, particularly in this year. Why is it important? Because this is the first presidential election to happen after Citizens United, and that means there are a lot of organizations that can give a lot of money without registering at the Federal Election Commission. And the only place they leave a paper trail is at the TV stations where bu they buy their ads. So if we want to find out who's trying to influence votes in this election, we have to do the hard work of opening up those files. We're very fortunate, and I want to uh, tip the hat to Free Press because they, they were leaders in this legal fight. We're very fortunate that the Federal Communications Commission earlier this year required a lot of TV stations in major markets to put their ad files online. That's been a big help, but there are also a lot of stations that are not yet required to put those files online. So we're asking two things uh, of our volunteers tonight. We're asking for help in taking the data that we already have from the FCC and entering it into a more structured format so that this will be easier for people to use and easier uh, for people to engage in research. The second thing we need is for people to go to stations in either in markets that are not covered by the FCC order or stations that are in covered markets that are not are also not covered by the order. Among these are all of the Spanish-speaking uh, TV stations. So you can imagine uh, the advertising that's going there. Uh, our guests, among our guests tonight, are going to be some Georgetown law students who are going to go and do that for us here in Washington D.C. Uh, and as you probably realize, a lot of our stations are getting inundated with ads uh, because they reach Northern Virginia. So those are the two asks. I want to turn it over now to Amanda in New York because uh, ProPublica has really uh, been doing fantastic work in getting the data entered, and I know her time is short, so I want to give her a chance uh, before she has to sign off to talk a little bit about what ProPublica is doing and uh, what uh, what kind of help she would like from us tonight. Sure. Thanks. And hey, everybody. I'm happy to see so many people sort of assembled for a very worthy project. Um, it's been really exciting to kind of see the momentum just build um, since really this project started way back um, in, you know, March or in the spring, sort of with um, trying to get the FCC to actually agree to just to put the files online in the first place. And um, we've come a long way since then, obviously. And um, as Kathy was saying, the reason that this project really is so important is, is because um, in these files really are the only place that we're able to really get a concrete sense of what these dark money groups um, are spending in the election. And um, it's been the way that we've been able to do some good reporting around that subject area so far. And we're really just looking for um, help in continuing to kind of make progress in, in getting the data kind of out of these um, PDF files to, uh, from the FCC site. Um, we sort of um, narrowed our focus a little bit or tried to, um, to give ourselves um, a better chance for success in picking sort of 30 markets that we thought would be sort of more in play. And um, we've made some progress, especially in um, Ohio. Uh, we, I think, cleared Cleveland. Um, of course, the other thing that I will note is every day, right, we 
check for new files from the FCC website and um, every day we're scooping up new ones. So it's this constant moving target. Um, for now we've closed out um, and finished freeing all the files in Cleveland, but we'd really like to kind of get a better overall picture of what's happening in Ohio. So we'd really encourage folks to take a look at the app, um, to look at Columbus and Cincinnati and help us do um, some document review there. I don't know if um, people have seen the tool and I'd be happy to show it or not, um, depending. But basically we're asking for four key data points. Um, you go into the tool, um, you first of all verify that it is in fact a contract. There's a lot of other um, documentation that kind of gets jumbled into these files and we tried to focus on um, the, the documents that would give us sort of the most consistent best dollar amounts. So we're looking for actual contracts, not the invoices, not the agreements. Um, and we're asking people to tell us, you know, who the name of the buyer is, the advertising agency making the buy, placing the buy, the amount of money, the gross um, total amount, and um, the contract number. And the other thing that I will point out, which um, the folks, you folks at Sunlight have reported on just um, in the last couple of days is just um, the confusion around revisions and how the stations handle um, re revision contracts. That's one thing that we're wrestling with now too, is to figure out um, now that we're clearing through these markets, what do these dollar amounts mean? When um, some stations are filing multiple instances of the same contract with um, dollar amounts that are um, with, with discrepancies in the dollar amounts. And then in other cases, some stations may seem to be pulling them from the FCC site entirely. So you know, really trying to get all of the data logged so that we can see sort of who's spending where and then all, you know, figure out um, how to kind of make sense of it all and reconcile um, the documents. So that's kind of it. I don't know if you guys have questions. Okay, um, thanks, Amanda. We will, um, uh, I think that's one reason for the exercise that we're doing here tonight because as Amanda said, it can be confusing, but we are not going to let uh, complications and um, and a daunting task keep us from doing something important. So we will have people here tonight who um, can walk people through the process. And uh, the nice thing about the tool we're using uh, for this webcast, Sunlight Live, is it does enable you to chat with us. Um, uh, and so we can answer a lot of questions. And I think this is an exploration project project for all of us because um, we're, as Amanda said, wrestling with complex uh, documents and, um, and a not very standardized uh, way of uh, both recording this information and also filing it. So uh, one, of the, one of the things we're trying to do is get our arms around it and figure out some best practices and we hope that you'll help us do that tonight. So. Um, thanks, Amanda. We will definitely uh, be on hand to help people uh, wrestle with the documents and, um, and, and show people how to put the data uh, into, into a form. Uh, so thank you, and thank you for all the work that you're doing. And I'm going to turn it over to the free press now. Okay, Josh, you can talk. <laughs> I think. Josh, can you unmute yourself? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Thanks. Uh, Josh Stearns here from Free Press, and I'm here with a bunch of staff from Free Press as well as some local uh, activists and members of our, our great organization here. We're so happy to have them here. And we've been traveling around the country to swing states, uh, pulling a lot of the files from the stations that aren't uploading to the FCC database and trying to get those files posted uh, along with great volunteers from Sunlight and campuses around the country. And uh, we're really excited to you know, be part of this effort to really bring some transparency to this process and also hold these TV stations accountable for this important public interest requirement that they're uh, supposed to be doing in this election year to open up these files and to bring transparency to who's buying these political ads. Free Press works on a range of issues, but our overall mission is to uh, build a national movement for better media in America. And we work on issues like uh, everything from media consolidation to the future of the internet, public media, public broadcasting, and, um, and community media. 
So this work, uh, the holding the broadcasters accountable and making sure that we can shine a light on the money, media, and election complex is a really key part of that. We'll talk a little bit later about uh, some of the files that we've been collecting and some of the important pieces of the files when we get into entering data. Uh, in addition to the invoices that you see there right below the video on Sunlight Live, if you're looking at that site right now, that's a great invoice, example of an invoice, but there's also important forms that actually get at who are some of the directors and executives uh, behind these organizations. It's unique data that doesn't exist anywhere else, and we'll look at some of those forms as well. But um, really glad to be here. Thanks for organizing this, and, uh, and we'll uh, talk more later. I thought Josh... <laughs> so um, this is Amy, and we are going to show you, um, as you can see on Sunlight Live, um, we have an example of a contract. So we're going to walk you through what the, the contracts look like and pretty much what you need to do uh, in order to be entering data. So Josh, it's up to you. Are you going to Yeah, let's just with this. Or, and you can control that when it's all oh, whatever you gotta do. Oh, thanks, Kirk. Hello. Let's see here. Let me think about this. Um Well, okay. So you should be able to this is gonna become a little tricky here to try and make this work, but we'll see if we can if we can do it. Uh give me a second here to bring my other computer up. So as um as Amanda mentioned earlier, there are a number of files that you'll find in one of these political files. Um, uh, it's it, it basically a bunch of, of different uh, uh, forms and requests and letters that stations record uh, around political advertising. And what you'll notice if you scroll down on the, uh, on the Sunlight Live page beneath the video, uh, if you go to sunlightlive.com, you'll see beneath the video uh, an example of one of the contracts. Um, what are you doing? I've it's, I'm just ignoring it. I'm just cleaning it. Um, so beneath, uh, beneath the file, you'll see a picture of one of the contracts. And what you'll notice is this, this one happens to be from Channel 4, uh, the NBC station here in, in Washington, D.C., which, um, of course, Washington, D.C. doesn't have uh, any dog in, the, uh, uh, in this fight, but we do. Uh, uh, the market does serve Maryland and Virginia. And so what you'll see, of course, in Virginia being a, uh, a battleground state, uh, plenty of advertising if you try and watch TV, uh, try and watch TV here. And so uh, this particular contract is for uh, Crossroads, American Crossroads. Um, we don't know what the ad is, but of course we know what American Crossroads is. And this contract shows how much is being spent. Um, uh, it's just the first page of it, but uh, if you were to look at the entire contract, and unfortunately I can't show you, you have to sort of follow along with my words. Um, but if you were to scroll through the multiple pages of this contract, you would see that it's uh, uh, tens of thousands of dollars. They can go on Sunlight Live. You can go on Sunlight Live, but they can't scroll through the additional pages of the contract. Um, so to start with, uh, and we'll get into more uh, detail on recording this information, is um, at the top you'll see that there is a contract uh, revision number. And that's a way of being able to, to track contracts as they go through the process. And I'm going to show a couple different examples here. Um, you also see uh, beneath, it says product, American Crossroads, and then contract dates, uh, uh, 9-5 through 9-14. And those are the actual uh, dates that the advertising that is being uh, purchased is going to run. Uh, sometimes it's called the flight date uh, or the air date. In this case, they call it the contract dates. And it's worth noting that every one of these contracts, there's no standard form. There's no governmental form they all have to follow, uh, but rather um, they have to provide this information. Most of the stations will use uh, a vendor to store this data and print it out. So a lot of these forms look very similar, uh, but there's also uh, a wide variety from station to station. Um, you can see here as well that the uh, this contract, the um, Next to uh, Advertiser, American Crossroads, it has original date and revision. And, uh, and what that shows is that the ad time was originally purchased in, on July 5th. And um, 
uh, and then has been revised uh, since on uh, September 13th, in fact, during the, the airtime. Um, and then beneath that, you'll, you can see the actual uh, advertising purchases. For example, the first one there uh, is a 30-second um, a spot. They bought uh, four of them uh, at $800 a piece to run during the 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. news. Um, and, and it goes on from there. Uh, for example, you can see that uh, uh, it gets more expensive as you get into, uh, uh, into drive time. So let me uh, just kind of go through a couple other forms that you will find in, uh, in the file. Oops, uh, hang on. Uh, okay, so that's contract one. Here's another contract. Uh, very similar looking. Uh, in fact, it looks like they actually used the same uh, same vendor to produce their um, produce their content. We'll just go through a couple more here. Um, sometimes you'll see uh, instead of a contract, you'll see an order. Um, an order is basically uh, uh, just what it sounds like. It's uh, uh, the request for, or I shouldn't say the request. It is the order for airtime. Uh, but not officially a contract. Um, quite often you'll see stations um, post just orders. Sometimes they'll post just contracts. Other times you'll see that they post the invoice. Which you'll see come up here. This one's from KUSA in Denver. All of these are essentially the same thing. Um, so don't be, uh, don't be, uh, uh, confused if they have one uh, term of art or another. However, be aware that sometimes uh, they will put multiples of these in there, and that's where it's really useful to, to uh, pay attention to the contract or invoice number uh, to see if one is a revision of a previous one. Very quickly, uh, some other files you might see in there. You might see a uh, request for airtime. And it might look like this. Um, and this is just what it sounds like. This is uh, sort of an initial uh, request. This information is, is useful, but in a different way. So this is not the kind of thing that we're going to, uh, uh, that records how much is being spent on advertising by. But it is useful because it might provide some insight and information to otherwise opaque um, uh, organizations. So this one here is, uh, let's see, this is, just Sherrod Brown. Um, it's probably just his uh, committee. Um, so not, not especially an opaque uh, group, but you can also get more information about it. For example, uh, here's their main address. Here's their phone number. Their officer is uh, Judith Zamore. Not to be confused with Amanda Zamora. Uh, a couple more real quick. Um, sometimes you'll see a NAB form or National Association of Broadcasters. Hang on here. And again, it's a, it's a similar kind of, of thing. It's, it's not the order or invoice or, or contract, but it is this uh, request that gives you insight into who might be behind some of these organizations. Um, so these are useful, uh, but not uh, not the actual ad buys. So with that. Yeah. Oh, uh, bring, yeah. Bring, do you want me to get a card back up? Yeah, so it was screen share. Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. Back to Kathy. Actually, back to uh, Amy, who's going to um, walk you through a little bit of how to um, actually enter this data. And uh, so we're going to uh, share what you're seeing on your screen right now is uh, politicaladsloop.com. Um, and we are going to walk you through how to enter data on this site. We have here uh, two of the folks who designed the site. And uh, so we have experts available to answer all your questions. but. Amy will walk you through the basics. Great. Thanks, Kathy. So if you're on Sunlight Live right now, you will see um, a screen share of politicaladsuit.com. 
So I encourage everyone to get onto politicaladsleuth.com if you haven't done so already. So to get started, it's actually quite simple. Um, there are a number of different things on top um, for the navigation bar, and a lot in terms of market report, newest ads, top av advertisers. It provides you with a lot of data on what we have already. So I'll what we want about logging in first. So what we want to do is actually go into um, login or sign up. Um, so you want to go into you see it login. And just put in your um, login information, or you can actually sign in with Twitter or Facebook. Can't remember. Is that fine? Yeah. So now you see Kathy's um, Facebook account that we're <laughs> logging in with. Oh. I think I was already logged in, so you. So you can yeah. you can put in you know more information um, in terms of what. Uh, city or state you're from and the your, this will affect your profile in terms of what files uh, will show up so the code and you just create an account and then you will be directed to pretty much your account landing page and you can see ways that you can help so if you're interested in gathering files there's more information and if you need help, that's why we have the great folks at Free Press. Uh, you can put in uh, your name and contact information, and they'll help uh, get you started on what you need to do. And we'll be talking about that a little bit more afterwards as well. But right now, we're really interested in just entering data. Um, so now that you're logged in, you can either go to enter data here, or now your enter and add data is also activated. And it's really that simple. You click enter an ad, and then you are brought into um, an ad page. So we have uh, a fun horizontal looking file. And that's a really important um, thing to remember is that these files are not standardized. So what you saw before when uh, Josh was sharing the data cards were one example of how it looks like, and this is a different example. Um, and let's see, this is kind of hard to read. So let's see if we can enter a different ad. Ah, this is better. So it's okay if you if you um, are opening a file and it's hard to read, just skip it, it's okay. So here's an example, so this is a contract. Um, and then you can Or if you've had enough fear, just put your head sideways and enter it. <laughs> <laughs> I think for this demo, it's just easier to just go to a next, next one. Um, so here is a contract. So you wanna look up the advertiser, and you can see here it says the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. And you can start typing that in here. And he, it will start to populate. And the contract number is right here, this number on the top right-hand corner. And you want to put that information in, 919714. Um, the flight start date, the scroll towards the bottom, it's a time period. So this is from October 1st to October 22nd. And then the grand total is the gross amount spent, which is right here. So there's $89,250. And there are little helpful tips throughout. So it says, don't use commas or dollar signs. And also, it's also important to remember that there are lots of different numbers here. So that's also the net amount. The, the number that we're interested in is the gross amount. And then lastly is the number of spots, which you see right here. And that's 69. And there are helpful links throughout. So at any point you feel confused um, on you know, how to find the advertiser, uh, and whatnot, you can click on these and it'll open in a, a new browser. 
window. And that was, how do I find the contract number? And I'll tell you where it should be at. And that's pretty much it. If, um, oh, and this is also broadcaster WESH. You just want to confirm that is correct. And there it is, WESH. So that's pretty much it that we're asking for. You can hit submit. And for the political ad sleuths that are very interested and very dedicated and want to put in additional data on this um, contract, you can do so. So if you want to put in the media buyer, um, lowest unit prices, and there are any notes um, that you want to enter, feel free to do so. But the, the field that I just covered, although are, uh, is the information that we are interested in. So you just hit submit. And it will bring you to the page of the file you just submitted. So you will see here, I actually, I put in all of this. And then the original document is attached to the data that you just inputted. So are there any questions? Questions from the room? Questions online? Okay. Yes, order is an ad buy. And uh, I also want to, we can do, do another one, enter an ad. Right. So here's another one. So this is also an order. And there are some things that will populate, and Josh talked about that when he was here a second ago. Uh, there are different files that are in here. We are just scraping all of the data that the FCC is making available. So there are orders in here, there are contracts in here, there are NAB forms in here, there are notes in here, and when you hit that enter and add button, you don't know what you're gonna get. <laughs> so that's why we need, we need your help um, to help us sort through this information. So this is another order. And if you're at any point confused um, if this is an order or this is an add button, you can click here and there are different examples of what they look like. So these are not ad by this one, um, the agreement form. So here's a letter, for instance. Let's go back here. So here is another one. This advertiser is is or not. Advertiser is asked me, is right here. It says revise. And this is when we need your investigative skills sometimes to find this information because it does look different for each of these files. So when I'm putting in asks me, for instance, it's not populating with the correct one. So you can also just add in. I can just add ASCII, and I spelled it wrong. Yeah, this really wants me to use this one. It, So when I type it in, you can, um, this is not necessarily this one. So should I just click it? Um, yeah. It's making me choose yeah, it. Yeah. So we probably should not be choosing this. So there are lots of these. Um, we're working out some of the bugs in the system right now. So when you come to something like this, I would say the best thing to do is not to put in the wrong information. 
and we can skip it and turn another ad. Right. So here's, and then, well, I think that one is not has more to do with the um, inputting, not the file itself. The file itself is fine. So you'll see that there are just many different types of files, and um, so that when I was doing using this drop-down entering, this information here is pre-populated um, by the metadata that's associated with each of these files. And when you start to type it in, it should populate the correct one, but sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it's just not in there yet. So you're, you can also put in new ones, but for some reason, ask me the one that we were just looking at, uh, made me uh, choose that specific um, union uh, or that specific local, and that was not the right one. And that's, and that's really okay. There are lots of these different files. Um, and here's another one that's sideways. <laughs> like I said before, it's very difficult, uh, and that's why we really need your help because it's just not standardized at all. For intensive purposes, we're just going to keep on entering a new ad. Um, one option that you have, I'll just say, um, this is Kathy again, um, is if you do have uh, issues with, and you've entered a lot of data, and you find, gee, it's, it's forcing me to put in a name that I know isn't right, uh, there is a notes version of the notes field, I think, at the bottom, and you can flag uh, problems in that field. So rather than not enter something at all, uh, it might be better to just go ahead and do as good a job as you possibly can and then indicate on the form uh, whatever problems you run into. Uh, again, and we really appreciate it if you email us and let us know when you run into problems like this. The only way we're going to make this database better is if we get good feedback from all of you. And so uh, that's one of the reasons we're doing this process tonight. We're discovering things as we enter data and show you how to enter data, and you will be discovering more things. Some of you may have good ideas for solving some of the problems we run into, and that's the idea of this process. We really want to get as much wisdom from this crowd as we possibly can. Right, and here's another example. This one is easier to look at. Um, so I put in the advertiser, the contract number, and now a, a comment that someone else had was um, the difference between a flight date and a contract date. So the contract dates are on the top. The flight date is actually when the ads will run, and that's what we're interested in. So the flight dates are usually called time periods, and it's towards the bottom. And so this is what this, these are the dates in which we're interested in. So this is from October 1st to October 19th. And as I mentioned before, we're interested in the gross amount, not necessarily the net amount. So this one is 14,075. And the number of spots is right here as well. And this one's for 17. You want to verify that the broadcaster is correct. KVVU TV, Hendersonville, Nevada. And as Kathy mentioned before, there is a data entry notes section where you can put in um, any notes or any comments you have on the specific file. And you hit submit. And you can, once again, verify the information that you just put in as compared to the actual original document. Are there any questions? Nope. Okay, so um, I think we just want people to help start entering data, and um, we're also going to talk about how we can actually go to a station. Yes, um, so what I would suggest is that people dive in, um, uncork your beers or whatever you're going to do to uh, make this uh, evening go well for you, um, and uh, start entering data. You can use the uh, chat on our website to, uh, to send in questions uh, via the Sunlight Live website. Uh, I think you can also uh, 
wave to us if you're on the Google Hangout, but I think the chat is probably the most efficient way to get questions in. Um, and while we're uh, working on this data, and as I said, we're very interested in any problems you run into, any questions you have, while we're doing this, uh, I'd like uh, the two Joshes, uh, Josh up in Western Mass and Josh here to maybe talk a little bit. Um, you can be the mood music, the background music, and uh, talk a little bit about what is involved in visiting stations. Uh, I'm interested in this myself because I'm going to be in Pittsburgh this weekend visiting family, and on Monday I'm going to go across the border to raid some Ohio TV stations that aren't covered by the FCC order. So, uh, so all of us are trying to pitch in, and uh, you can too. Uh, you can see a map. I think Josh can show it to you um, of uh, where the markets, uh, what markets are covered, what markets are not. But keep in mind that even if you live in one of the top 50 markets, as we do here in Washington, uh, not all of the stations in your market is covered. And I think, um, uh, Amy, actually, you can show folks uh, on Sunlight, uh, on Political Ad Sleuth, how to find the list of stations in your market uh, and how to find out which is covered and which is not. If you go to the, um, the uh, states line, okay, um, and uh, you can see that uh, it will give you a list. You can go uh, look by markets and uh, under the TV markets, let's go to Las Vegas at the top and hit all stations. And when you look down those stations, you will see that um, there's a column that says mandated. Mandated means that that uh, station is or is not required by the Federal Communications Commission to put its files online. The ones that say no uh, are not required to file. And so those can be very interesting. Uh, we have been joined since we started this by some students from Georgetown Law School who are going to go to the stations in Washington that are not filing online. One of those is an Univision uh, affiliate, and so we think there's going to be a lot of advertisements uh, that we don't have in our system. So anybody can go pretty much uh, any, anywhere you are, there's going to be work to do. So if you want to uh, raid a station, uh, the Joshes will tell you what's involved and how to do that. So um, take it away. Which I don't think, I think Josh has left his seat. Yeah, right there. No, there he is. Josh, do you want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what's involved in visiting a TV station and what people should do? Sure, thanks. Hello, everyone. Um, so we at Free Press here have been to a number of stations. I personally have been to stations in Chicago <clears throat> and Miami. And... You know, it, it really varies. Uh, both of those are in the top 50 markets, but I was going specifically to stations that weren't uploading their files. So I was headed to uh, Spanish language stations primarily, especially in Miami. And we're actually going to be um, releasing some of the information we found at Spanish language stations around the country. We also went to Spanish language stations in Albuquerque uh, and Colorado Springs and Denver. And uh, we have found that calling ahead is, is a nice nod. By law, you don't need to make an appointment to go visit the public files, but calling ahead and giving people a heads up at the station that you're coming can oftentimes be uh, useful, uh, especially because sometimes you end up showing up at the station and no one knows what you're talking about when you ask for public files. Um, so it's good for you to know that you can go in at any point in time, um, ask for the, to see the public and political files, and specifically what we're most interested in it has been um, third-party files uh, for 2012. So we haven't been looking as closely at the Obama or Romney campaign ad files, mainly because uh, our goal here has been to figure out for these no-name third-party organizations, uh, you know, Americans for America or People for a Better Tomorrow and Puppies for Apple Pie, etc., who's behind those ads and, and how much those ads are influencing this election. So we've been looking at those third-party files um, specifically. And what when you go into a station, we've been bringing a scanner in. By law, they ha stations have to give you a copy of the files, but they can charge you what's called a reasonable fee. And um, that reasonable fee can be anywhere from 15 cents a page to, I've heard, some stations charging over $2 a page. Uh, and these files can be quite large. 
So if you have access to a scanner of some kind, I recommend bringing that. Um, if not, some people have taken pictures with their iPhones, uh, but the quality of those can be questionable. And as you can see, as you start to flip through these files, uh, we do need good enough quality so people can read them and enter the data on them. Um, so the other option, of course, is to have the station make photocopies for you, but uh, just be prepared that that can add up quick. If you're going looking for one specific super PAC or organization, that might be a reasonable way to go about it. But if you're trying to pull a, a huge file at a big station, you're uh, much better off with a scanner. So um, I've had pretty good luck where people have been pretty friendly every time I've gone in. But sometimes you'll find that people don't want to let you come look at the file or ask you to come back another day when you have an appointment. And you should just know that you're well within your rights uh, to go in and you don't need that appointment. And we have on our blog at freepress.net um, on the road. So you'll find a whole bunch of stories from those of us staff who've been on the road collecting these files of exactly the sorts of situations we've encountered and how we've handled those. So we've sort of documented uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the public file inspections. But for the most part, I would say, you know, 75% of the time things go really smoothly. And uh, I've often been given an office or a cubicle where I can set up my laptop and scanner and work my way through the files, um, you know, with unstapling things and, and wounding myself with various paper cuts and such. And, uh, and in the end, we've, we've come out with uh, good piles of documents. And the one thing I would suggest is if you look at how the files are broken up on politicaladsleuth.com, you'll see they're broken up by ad buy. And um, if you can break your files up as you're scanning them by ad buy, that'll match the way that the FCC is inputting them and match the way that politicaladsleuth.com is set up to do data entry. Uh, I see Josh sitting down there, so I'm going to kick it to him to talk a little bit more about his take on visiting stations. Okay, let's see. Is this on? Yeah. Um, I'll just, and there's not a whole lot to add to what uh, Josh Stearns said, other than, make sure that's working, uh, other than to say that, uh, some, that sometimes stations will keep their files split into two different groups. The uh, so-called public file, which includes uh, correspondence from viewers, from uh, contour maps and ownership reports and things like that. Um, and sometimes kept separately are the, is the political file, which might be kept up in the sales department. So if you go in and, and they put you in front of a file and you're not seeing any of the kinds of things we're showing, um, it may be that they've given you the public file and you need to go and say, hey, where's the political ad buys? And they'll, they'll take you someplace else. Uh, other than that, I'd, I would second everything uh, uh, the first job said. Okay, folks. Um, so let's just keep digging in and um, entering data. Um, we're all going to be um, chatting here in Washington, and uh, we'll be watching the chat on Sunlight Live to see if any of you have questions. Um, what we will do is in about uh, five or ten minutes, uh, we've been joined by some new people, and I suspect some new people have joined us online. So we will uh, basically reprise uh, the, our top intro and talk a little bit about why we're doing this. So if you've arrived late and missed that, don't worry. Uh, we'll walk you through the basics. But in the meantime, uh, there should be plenty of people um, in the room, both uh, physical and virtual, to help get you started um, diving into this data. And uh, please do let us know if you have any questions. Um, it is almost the witching hour of 8 o'clock. I really want to thank everyone uh, for participating in this um, uh, technologically innovative gathering uh, that spanned many states. And uh, I don't know how many people, but uh, we had a lot of people on. Um, I want to encourage people to continue the work on your own. Uh, we are always available to answer questions. Um, both us and the free press, all of the information on how to reach us is on the politicaladsleuth.com site. Please spread the word to any friends you've got. Uh, this is a um, project of particular urgency between now and Election Day, but uh, we definitely want to continue after Election Day because um, the payoffs for the money that we're seeing are going to come next year. So we really need to get a handle on um, who's giving in this election, what their agenda is, and that's what this project is all about. So uh, continue at your own pace. Uh, please let us know if you have any problems. Uh, give us feedback. Um, 
and uh, let your friends know and uh, go out, enter data, visit TV stations, upload files. Uh, you'll be doing a great public service. But thank you very much for joining the Sunlight Data Happy Hour. Thank you to Free Press. Josh, if you'd like to say anything, you might want to do that now. Do you want to <laughs> add a few closing words? Uh, we were just saying here, it feels like we're just getting in the rhythm, so we'll have to continue this uh, another time and, and in our own spaces, but I want to just thank everybody who came and who tuned in around the country, and uh, if anyone wants to talk about visiting a local station, I'm happy to talk about my experiences as well as help be a matchmaker for you and your local stations, and uh, let's get out there and, and uncover some more data. Yay. Yay. Thanks, everybody. Rock on. <laughs> okay, so we're going to sign out. Uh, we want to really thank everybody, and uh, we hope to see you down the road in uh, data land. We will be sponsoring a data fest early next year, so stay tuned. Uh, we will be putting out the word on that uh, through our Sunlight Network, and uh, I'm sure the free press will as well. Thanks. <laughs>